Once a betrayed soul, Liam found himself reborn into a noble household within the intergalactic empire after being plagued by the schemes of a devious guide. The noble household Banfield was teetered on the edge of ruin. Liam managed to develop it and raked up achievements as he killed Pirate Hunter Goes in Volume 1. Before we start Volume 2, I want to encourage you to check out our exclusive membership program on YouTube. Our story continues in Volume 2, where Liam finds himself aboard his ship, engaging in a fierce battle against pirates. Overwhelmed by Liam's troops, the pirates retreat. In a moment of excitement, Liam orders the complete annihilation of the pirates. While satisfied with the outcome, he yearns for the thrill of personally joining the battle. In the midst of his contemplation, a young girl named Elysia approaches him. She represents the third weapons factory and seeks Liam's opinion on their new product, which he is currently using. Elysia proudly shares that their product surpasses others in both performance and design. Unlike most factories that specialize in one aspect. Impressed, Liam decides to purchase all the ships they have brought. Noble houses need permission for buying powerful ships and House Banfield had recently approved to buy Super Dreadnought. When Liam and Elysia were discussing the details, Liam's old favorite, Mias, appears in her work uniform, urgently seeking answers as to why he betrayed her. Mias claims that Liam promised to buy Super Dreadnought ships from the Seventh Factory. Liam refutes the accusation, stating that he never made such a promise and would punish anyone else for perjury. Eulysia observed the confrontation and called out to Nias while wondering how they could send a tech freak like her to secure order. Nias asked Eulysia to respect her as she had recently been promoted to captain which was a higher position than her. They had a fierce conversation and it was revealed that Eulysia had encountered Nias during business negotiations but mentioned how Nias possessed zero talent in sales. Nias defended stating that she has achieved the highest sales among the Seventh Factory in recent years. Liam, shocked by this revelation. Eulysia explains that Nias' success is due to Liam's large orders, as no other houses have a relationship with the Seventh Factory. Liam ponders the future of the Seventh Factory, while Nias pleads with him to purchase ships, mentioning her completed maintenance work on the Avid. However, Liam dismisses her request, as their enemies are currently too weak. Despite Eulysia praising Liam's fleet for its excellent performance and zero casualties, Liam remains unsatisfied. He felt that his fleet still had a long way to go. Finally, Liam decides to order ships from Eulysia, intending to expand his army. Eulysia is grateful for the opportunity. While Nias, in a pitiful state, implores Liam to buy some ships, even if they are lower-level cruisers. Touched by her desperation, Liam impulsively agrees to purchase 100 ships, shocking Elysia, who struggled to sell their ships, unlike Nias, who achieved it effortlessly. As Liam signs the contract, a soldier informs him that the battle is over and all pirates have been annihilated. Liam orders the collection of debris and returns to the House Banfield Fortress, where he is welcomed by Amagi and other AIs. Amagi insists on welcoming Liam. Despite his protestations, Liam senses Amagi's anger, even though she denies it. Familiar with her behavior, Liam recognizes her true emotions. Reflecting on the battle against the weak pirates, Liam expresses disappointment, as his desired worthy opponents, Amagi revealed that most of the pirates were avoiding Banfield's fleet because of Liam's title as the pirate hunter. Liam was frustrated as his piggy bank was running away from him. He was quite different as other lords would have rejoiced at the news of pirates leaving their territory. Amagi reveals that even without hunting pirates, they have no financial problems. Liam agreed to that as they possess a way to create gold as much as they want. She provides a report on the materials they currently need, and Liam uses his trophy alchemy box. Obtained from the pirate goes, with the guide's help, to turn debris into precious materials. This lucrative endeavor allows Liam to accumulate wealth and establish shell companies to conceal his income source. Despite his desire to repay the Banfield household's debt, Amagi advises against it. As it may expose the existence of the alchemy box. 
Amaji asked why Liam ordered a lot of weapons when they received messages from the third and seventh factories. Liam felt he couldn't argue with Amaji, so he thought it was fine. Even if they replaced the weapons with older models that worked well, it would still be a lot of work. Amaji told him not to do such things, but Liam couldn't resist trying out new weapons to save face. Eventually, he reluctantly agreed to Amaji's advice. Liam asked Amaji if they had decided which noble house he would train under. Amaji said it hadn't been decided yet. Liam suggested picking anyone randomly to finish it quickly. As part of their noble upbringing, signs of nobility had to train under other nobles before becoming adults. However, no one wanted to accept someone from House Banfield because of their infamous predecessors. Brian and Amaji were making efforts to establish relationships with other noble houses from scratch because they were isolated by the noble society. Amaji asked Liam to wait while Brian selected the best option. Liam briefly considered asking the guide but dismissed it as unimportant. Finally, Brian chose a house for Liam's training. Liam, disinterested in the training due to rumors of it being a pretext for luxurious living in another noble house, inquired about it. Brian clarified that the house Razel, where Liam was headed, offered genuine live-in training without any opportunities for leisurely activities. Curious to learn more, Liam further inquired about it. He was going to house Razel, which amassed wealth through resource-rich satellites, known for their advanced mineral processing technology, and was renowned for sending children for live-in training. The surrounding territories had not flourished as they had accepted immigrants from those planets to support House Banfield's expanding territory. Liam wanted to develop his new territories and derive entertainment from oppressing them as an evil lord. Amaji instructed Liam to re-enter the education capsule for training preparation, while Liam asked Amaji to handle everything in his absence. Brian offered his support, but Liam, as usual, declined, preferring him to work silently without additional tasks. Brian expressed his disappointment in feeling useless to Liam. In the context of the Razel discount, Randolph Sarah Razel, the head of the Razel household, assessed the applicants for live-in training in his territory. He regretted the absence of noble houses among them to establish connections with. They discussed various households, including House Exner, which was renowned in the military who was sending their highly skilled eldest son. However, Randolph was unwilling to establish a relationship with a recently elevated upstart noble household and prioritized power over individual abilities. The guide behind him observed everything and saw an opportunity for revenge against Liam. Eager to expose his true nature as Liam's gratitude reaching him every day. He tried to change that data, but his power was not enough for that. In the end, the guide swapped the names and information between two households. When they reached Liam's data, it displayed the Banfield Territory's information before Liam assumed control. They perceived Banfield as an audacious household seeking relationships beyond their status. Randolph planned to accept their applications, but treat them as servants, benefiting from their labor. Eventually, they encountered the authentic data of the Banfield territory, but under a different name. Randolph was astonished by the achievements listed under the name Peter Sarah Petak and deemed the Petak household worthy of establishing relations with the Razel household. He entertained the idea of arranging a marriage between his daughter and Peter, eagerly awaiting the next year. The guide left the scene, satisfied with the success of his plan, accompanied by joy. It was the beginning of a training day. House Banfield and House Petak arrived at the Razel House spaceport. Banfield, known for their generosity, sent a plethora of gifts to ensure the children's comfort during their stay. The Razel household members were astounded by the abundance of rare minerals and even witnessed a brand new model spaceship used for transport, which they thought of as House Petak. In contrast, the ships of House Petak, mistaken as belonging to Banfield, arrived empty-handed, without any gifts. Moreover, they imposed the burden of maintenance costs on the Razel household. Naturally, disappointment filled the air. Little did they know, this was all part of the guide's sinister plan. He delighted in proving to Liam, the main character, 
that he was an evil being. Deterring any gratitude from the young trainee. As Peter, another trainee, arrived at the spaceport, he was greeted directly by Randolph, exuding an arrogant demeanor due to the special treatment he received. Similar to Liam, Peter had been granted territory at a tender age. Leading a carefree life. Oblivious to proper etiquette, Peter ordered the servants to take him to his room, prompting Randolph to intervene and guide him properly. The bystanders were taken aback by Peter's audacity, behaving shamelessly in the house of another noble. While Randolph guided Peter, he seized the opportunity to introduce his daughter to him. Peter inquired about her beauty, and Randolph confirmed that his daughter was quite beautiful and was evaluating Peter's character. With cunning intentions, Randolph planned to arrange a marriage between his daughter and Peter, aiming to manipulate and control him for the benefit of his own household. Meanwhile, Liam found himself being escorted to a room akin to a servant's dormitory. Quite different from the luxurious accommodation he had anticipated. The instructor informed them that their training would take place in such humble surroundings, instructing them to prepare accordingly. Though many members expressed their discontent. The instructor reminded them that they were not guests, but trainees who must abide by the rules. After changing into their training attire, they were instructed to gather at the training grounds. Liam felt disappointed. Realizing that his initial assumptions about a life of luxury had been shattered. Even Brian donated his most treasured bonsai plant, which was the best he could procure. His plant was top-notch, which had won many competitions, so he asked Liam to not worry about the Razel household not liking this. Liam thought about how it went just like Brian mentioned and the Razel household was truly holding a proper live-in training. Liam couldn't help but acknowledge Randolph as a virtuous lord, in stark contrast to his own villainous reputation. The instructor asked them to prepare as their training would start by running a lap, a daily routine that would continue throughout their training. To Liam's surprise, his roommate turned out to be Kurt Sarah Exner, a baron. Liam found solace in outranking him but was dismayed when Kurt ignored his presence, deepening his dislike for him. Time flew by, and a month had passed, filled with physical training, classes, and the experience of working as household staff. Liam found the training too easy compared to his rigorous swordsmanship practices back home. He didn't have to handle administrative tasks or attend meetings, which added to his boredom. During one of these mundane moments, Ella Sarah Behrman, Liam's newfound friend, encouraged him to engage in his duties. Their attention turned to the laughter outside, where Randolph's daughter, Katerina, enjoyed her training alongside Peter, her entourage by her side. Unlike the trainees, covered in sweat and mud, Katerina and Peter seemed to revel in their activities. Ella shared how Peter had successfully developed his territory and acquired a sword license at a young age. Peter had gained a reputation as a benevolent ruler, beloved by the people in his domain. Great expectations surrounded his future due to his numerous accomplishments. Upon hearing this, Liam was convinced that Peter was just like him, having also developed his territory and obtained a sword license. However, the stark contrast in their reputations puzzled Liam. He suspected that Randolph had uncovered his atrocious deeds back in his own territory, which explained the disdain shown towards him. Ella, understanding Liam's concerns, assured him that everyone in their group faced similar challenges. Liam wondered why someone like Ella was with him. Ella mentioned that she was just a third daughter and it was in her best interest to finish the training and establish good relationships with the Razel household as it would be helpful for her brother who was going to inherit her household. It sure was an unpleasant topic, but it was not uncommon in the noble society. Liam sympathized with her condition where Ella perceived Liam to be a kind person. As Liam heard Ella's explanations, he was sure that everyone who was put aside had their own problems. As they were getting the same treatment as him, he believed that they were also his fellow evil lord allies. So Liam felt that it was not bad to make friends among the evil lord group. Ella then inquired about Kurt, suggesting that Liam befriend him due to their shared living space. However, 
Liam expressed his disdain for Kurt, citing his constant ignorance. Ella urged Liam to reconsider, highlighting the benefits of a harmonious living arrangement. Liam stubbornly stated that he would only consider befriending Kurt if he humbled himself before him. Ella playfully called Liam self-centered, while Liam viewed Ella as a weirdo. The following day, the instructor announced a martial arts sparring session, cautioning everyone to be careful. Each trainee was to select a weapon and pair up with their respective roommates. Liam and Kurt chose similar swords, but Kurt's was double-edged, unlike Liam's single-edged sword. Kurt warned Liam about his inability to hold back, to which Liam confidently responded, referencing his mastery of the one-flash technique. Kurt, unfamiliar with the technique, considered withdrawing from the match. However, both remained resolute and prepared to face each other. As the instructor signaled the start of the match, Liam and Kurt engaged in a fierce duel, causing both to be propelled backward by the sheer force of their attacks. Liam was astonished by Kurt's resilience in withstanding his blows, while those observing the spectacle were equally amazed. Kurt humbly apologized for underestimating Liam's swordsmanship, acknowledging the significance of the one-flash technique. They both took a moment to study each other's movements. The instructor, witnessing their momentary lapse, reprimanded them, reminding them to remain focused on the fight. Ella, observing from the sidelines, chuckled in a peculiar manner, hinting at her own secrets. After Kurt's sparring session, he took a bath to cool down. He believed that people who relied solely on their wealth were not skilled. Kurt's father became a noble because of his abilities. Kurt had been seriously training in swordsmanship since birth and obtained his license. He didn't want to become arrogant, but he felt he had indeed become one. During a sparring match, Liam launched a strong attack that Kurt could barely block. Kurt thought it was a regular training session, but he now believed that he could learn a thing or two from Liam. Later, as Kurt entered a room, he heard Liam laughing in an evil way. Liam was laughing because House Exner was imposing a very high tax rate of 60%, which he considered extremely wicked. Kurt explained that House Exner was a new noble house and lacked experience in managing a territory and dealing with the people. Kurt had come to House Razel to learn management, but he found the training to be normal to that of any other house. He mentioned that they were planning to start training for natural satellite resource development the next year, but without a proper understanding of the basics, ruling effectively was challenging. Hearing Kurt's situation, Liam agreed that House Razel wasn't the best place for training. Despite this, Kurt was determined to put an effort for his parents' sake. Liam decided to help Kurt by teaching him about taxes and how to deal with the populace. Kurt was taken back by this sudden development. Liam suggested reducing the taxes to avoid hindering development. Liam really liked the way House Exner was wringing people dry, but our poor Liam doesn't know that it was the average tax method among the empire. He believed that ties between evil lords were crucial and wanted to get along with Kurt. Liam recommended extorting from the rich rather than the poor. Liam also advised flattening the palace to cut costs which Kurt believed to be troublesome. Liam shouted at him to manage with that so he could reap the benefits later. He also emphasized the importance of having full control over the military. Kurt was amazed to know how everything in Liam's territory was in order. The territory given to Kurt's father was poor and the empire still seeks taxes from it. The household and the populace were experiencing unspeakable hardships because of that. With no fame to their name as they were new nobles, no one was willing to help them in their surroundings. But now he had hope. He thought that it would be meaningless to consult with others, but he believed that Liam could solve it. Liam asked Kurt to reform his military and to buy new ships which cost less to maintain than worn-out battleships with high maintenance cost. When Kurt lamented about the lack of money to buy the new ships, Liam offered to help Kurt borrow money through his private merchant, Thomas, whom he trusted. Kurt worried about the debt affecting Liam. But Liam didn't consider money important and valued the friendship with Kurt's family, who he believed to be fellow villains. Kurt mistook Liam's talking of evil as the way of his conviction and aspired to be like him. They became friends. 
and Kurt discussed this with his father while Liam contacted Thomas. The next day, Isla whose name was wrongly interpreted as Ella met Liam and she was happy to know they got along well. Liam admitted he was wrong about Kurt all along. Isla said she was content as long as they got along. Liam asked if Isla needed any help, and she mentioned that she didn't know much about managing her household, but she was fine as long as she married into a family of equal status. Liam suggested she marry Kurt, but Isla rejected the idea, saying it was not a good choice. And her family should make that decision. Liam was concerned for her, but she thought it was unnecessary. Meanwhile, in a nearby corridor, Razel's daughter, Katerina, was having an affair with someone, and Isla and Liam accidentally overheard them. Isla remarked that it was bold of them to do such things when Katerina was supposed to be engaged with Peter. Liam thought Katerina was assertive and wondered if all girls were like that. Isla agreed that most marriages were based on agreements, and some people might have multiple partners. Liam agreed and believed that people couldn't marry for love alone. However, Isla disagreed, saying there were cases where marriages were based on love, and she believed love could conquer anything. Isla reminded Liam that they had to hurry as they were already late for work. Liam mentioned that there were some troublemakers causing problems the day before, and the number of such incidents had been increasing. He believed that if their lord was a noble person, there would be no way to put an end to the crimes. The only way to stop it was to become evil itself. He lamented about the fact that Peter didn't understand well. In the evening, Kurt and Liam were discussing a natural satellite resource development training that they would start soon. And it would involve hard labor for a year. Liam thought it was still better than working as servants in the mansion. Since labor training would also enable them to know more about piloting mobile nights, it was more beneficial to do that. Kurt appreciated Liam's advice and considered meeting him a miracle. Suddenly, Isla came and greeted them cheerfully. When they asked for the reason, Isla asked them to join her for natural resource development training in a nearby system as a group. Kurt and Liam agreed. And they decided to form a group for the training. Meanwhile, Katerina was walking through the mansion and overheard the commotion. She wondered if Peter was fooling around with other girls again. She didn't like the idea of being with someone like Peter, even if it benefited her family. She had heard that Peter had obtained the sword school license, but he had used a lot of excuses to abstain himself from the matches. She also heard that he revitalized his territory after he took over as a lord, but she had doubts about the truth of these rumors. Liam and others were preparing for work in a spaceship. Liam was unhappy with the sweaty suits they had to wear. Kurt saw it as a way to understand the workers' hardships, while Isla disliked using things that smelled like others. The instructor told them to stop complaining as the training would show them the challenges of working in extreme environments. Kurt thought the training would help them manage work more efficiently without wasting money. While Isla believed it would be better to avoid such work if it caused business losses. But Liam had other ideas. He blamed House Razel for the situation, saying it was the responsibility of higher ups to make profits and implement changes, not the workers. He saw it as an excuse to cover up negligence and felt it was a waste of time, given his wealth. Even when the instructor glared at him, Liam still refused to change his opinion. Liam remembered his previous workplace, where if one failed at a task, they were asked to use their heads and work harder. When you pull it off, the credit would go to the boss, and ideas that cost too much were dismissed even if it could bring them profits in the long term. He wished he could tell his past self to quit if his work wasn't appreciated. They were deployed on an asteroid, and Liam found the new machine easy to control, compared to the old one, Avid. Kurt and Isla seemed to be doing well too. The instructor acknowledged Liam's skills and asked him to help with work. They joked around and became friendly. After their regular training, Kurt marveled at Liam's tough childhood training, but Liam considered it easy compared to his master's. Kurt wished to meet Liam's master, who he considered as a great person. Isla joined them and suggested taking a group photo. 
Liam asked Isla to take her hands off as he was sweaty, but Isla didn't mind it as she was going to take a bath soon. They took many photos and Isla left the place. Kurt admired Isla's cheerful nature, which Liam agreed upon. Liam felt that there was no point in his training there, but he was happy to meet Kurt and Isla. Liam wanted to share his experience with Amaji, but realized he had forgotten to make the regular call. When he contacted Amaji, she asked why he hadn't kept in touch as agreed. Liam explained he had been busy, and Amaji reassured him it was okay, as long as he was fine. Brian asked Liam about his life there, and Liam mentioned the lack of tedious work and doing training on his own. Brian was pleased to hear Liam was doing well. When Brian questioned Liam about wearing a training uniform, Liam mentioned that it was his regular daily outfit, which totally shocked Brian. Leaving the shocked brain, Liam asked about their territory developments, immigrant plans, and military reconstruction. Amaji reported that everything was progressing well and inquired what Liam meant by that was his daily outfit. When Liam explained he was doing mining work on one of House Razel's resource asteroids, and Brian was shocked to learn they made him do manual labor, which they justified as a necessary training to learn the hardships of workers. When Kurt reminded Liam that their meeting time was up, Liam said goodbye and ended the call. After Liam hung up the call, Brian expressed concern about Liam's well-being. Amaji mentioned that Liam had already ended the call. Brian was upset with how Liam was treated even after they sent the excessive resources to House Razel. Brian decided to travel there to investigate the mistreatment of Lord Liam and vowed never to forgive the Razel household for treating Liam as a laborer. Amaji agreed with Brian and started gathering information about them. However, she was still happy that Liam made some friends. And Brian also agreed with that, but it wasn't a reason to forgive House Razel. On the other hand, Kurt was worried about fanatics. Kurt's father, a famous knight, had a lot of fans, and among them were some extreme fans. It was a normal thing that being an ace or a named knight would make them popular across the empire. Liam was amused to learn that Kurt's father was that famous. Kurt mentioned that some secretly took private pictures of his father and it caused a ruckus in his territory. Even his own photos had been circulating, which increased Kurt's worry. Liam found this fascinating and thought Kurt's surroundings resembled that of an idol. That's when Liam got a new idea. He suggested improving security and legally selling their images to profit from it. As someone breaking through their securities, to take a simple photo meant it was worth it. It was a simple way to earn a profit. Liam believed that rather than some bootleg and knockoff, a well-taken and legal image would sell for more. Though the sneak photos would sell for more. It was still a good plan. Kurt liked the idea and thanked Liam, planning to discuss it with his father. Still, Liam asked Kurt to be careful of some loyal subordinates as high loyalty could be a problem too. Ella laughed at their interactions. She suggested Liam to eat vegetables, and he gave them to Kurt because it was too bitter. Kurt ate it asking Liam to consider eating bitter vegetables, but Liam was adamant about not eating it. Suddenly, they heard a weird laugh, but they couldn't find the source and dismissed it. They thought they were imagining things. But Ella was the one who laughed like that. She watched them get along and got so ecstatic she almost let her voice out. She felt that it was too soon and wanted more of such moments. Meanwhile, outside the territory, Yasushi wandered around, trying to avoid Liam and running low on money. He was rejected for a job due to not having the required license even though he had a lot of experience. Hungry and desperate, he had sold all his possessions. When he was looking at the cafeteria and thought about how hungry he was, a thug hit his shoulders and fell down. He acted a usual spam drama of having his shoulder broken from that light impact and demanded monetary compensation for the treatments from Yasushi. The thug demanded to kill him if he didn't pay the money for it. That's when Liam was standing behind that thug and asked him who was daring enough to kill the Almighty Master. He was glad to meet his master after a long time. Yasushi saw Liam on a new planet and wondered why he was there. He thought Liam might be angry for lying to him and came to harm him. 
Without much time to think, Yasushi wanted to run away quickly. A thug asked if Liam was Yasushi's friend. Seeing Liam carry a sword, which was known as a toy in intergalactic nations, he picked a gun to play with him. But Liam used one swing of his one flash technique and killed all of them. Yasushi realized running away from Liam was impossible now. Liam had become much stronger than before. Liam approached Yasushi, knelt down and greeted him. And talked about how hard he had worked to improve his skills. Yasushi acted as if he could tell from Liam's sword that he had improved. Liam was happy to hear that. He asked if Yasushi lived there and where his sword was. Even though he had sold his sword and was now looking for jobs here. He fabricated that he was traveling with his only clothes on. He came up with a like which a true master would say and explained that he was looking for the disciples. He made up a story about seeking disciples who could master the way of the flash. Liam suggested starting a dojo in his territory, but Yasushi declined, fearing getting caught. He used the excuse that he was looking for students who would perfect the way of the flash rather than mere run-and-mill students. Liam felt that there was no need to improve one flash as it was already perfect in its own way. Yasushi denied that as there is no end to the path of the warrior and to endlessly strive forward is the way of the flash. Liam asked for an excuse and asked for his permission to let him assist Yasushi in finding his own students. Yasushi denied that it was his duty and mentioned that every practitioner of one flash need to have at least three disciples. Since Liam was his first disciple, he was looking for the other two and Yasushi asked Liam to do the same. His swordsmanship is his way of flaws H and Liam had his own way of swordsmanship. There may be a chance to combine it all, but it was not now. Since the universe is truly vast, they need to look for opportunities to improve, lest their skills stagnate. He blabbered any lie he could think of. Liam admired his wit and asked for forgiveness for his previous thinking. Yasushi assured him that he was already an exceptional swordsman and mentioned that he believed that Liam could raise truly exceptional disciples. Liam vowed to do his best at that. But Liam couldn't send his master on his journey empty-handed, so he decided to give some travel funds. Yasushi accepted, calmly, but was secretly happy about the freebie. While they were talking, a guard came and questioned them about the incident. Liam asked Yasushi to leave it to him and left the place. The guard arrived, found the dead bodies, and imprisoned Liam. In prison. Liam couldn't stop thinking about Yasushi's words and decided to start looking for his own disciples. Like and subscribe to see more of this amazing series and to know more about Liam's future endeavors.